Good evening, all. Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. We wanted to address the uh, the Las Vegas uh, alleged backyard aircraft landing. Uh, we didn't want to do it live tonight because we wanted to be able to talk to y'all more directly on our opinions. And it's hard to watch the chat sometimes. And we've got new moderators that are starting out and stuff right now. So it would just be easier right now to uh, try to run a show like this. Uh, Cal screen the way it looks. Uh, he dropped his phone. Might have punched it. Yeah, I'm not sure, but his I'm phone not has <laughs> He's not possessed, and his head won't be spinning around or puking peas tonight. So uh, I think we're I think we're gonna be good with him. He starts doing, if he starts doing that, we're gonna we're gonna uh, sell the video. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so they had a large green light. It crashes in the backyard. The light is said to have uh, landed in the backyard, and then the kid says that him and his brother were working on a truck when this happened, and they were not able to see the craft because the craft was bending the light, and then all of a sudden they were able to see the craft, and then they saw a creature with a broken leg. Okay. Not very uh, sturdy if they break their leg. Yeah. But you, again, they were in a crash, so a broken leg would be a blessing, I guess. Now, here's, here's, here's the weird thing. Uh, I won't go into everything right now until we get a little further in the conversation, but you all know how I am. I uh, found a lot of... Uh, a lot of loopholes. I found a lot of... Uh, oh discrepancies in his statement he uh said a lot of things that was not true and um, that kind of made me start doubting the story right from the beginning uh do you all remember and i don't know if both of you will remember this but do you remember whenever i was dating cassie and it was yeah. this year and i believe it was i don't it might have been around april and uh, she was staying the nights with me and everything. And I had actually talked to Kirk, I think, about this. We had yes. the, same exact, the same exact thing happened. Me and Cassie were outside. She was staying the nights with me. We were sitting outside. And we heard this. Well, first, we saw a light. The whole yard lit up in the middle of the night, like 3 in the morning. And then there was the same colored light followed by a boom. Mm -hmm. And it done the same thing. It was two to five seconds, and then it, you know, it went away. Uh, that light. In this video, well, no, the 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 news channel, news channel six and eight and all those twenty three said it was confirmed meteor. Uh, okay. Now there there was a large sonic boom after it went over, and I that was the first time in my life I've ever heard a sonic no boom. Uh, but I mean, it was. It rattled my windows in my car. We were staying in the car, and it was huge. And it, But they looked the same as what everybody is saying in uh, Las Vegas. I mean, there was no no difference to me. And um, I don't know much about aerial flight, but they were speaking to a guy that was a pilot, and he said the trajectory of the object was also off to be uh, an aircraft so well i think kirk wanted to talk a little bit about something about a project a theory or a possibility that you think may have happened well there's actually the government has what was called what was dubbed x-37 the code name was thunder dart which is a very highly classified, very fast spy plane uh, that can actually go into the into outer space. It's basically a 5-8 scale space shuttle. Now, what they're able to do with that is they're actually able to go to the outer edge of the atmosphere to where they're just about to break into space they literally will cut the engine off and glide back down 
And at one point, it's on the verge of being hypersonic. Perfect stealth weapon to pull this with. I mean, they could drop a flare or something. And you would never hear any sound, but yet you would see the light coming down. Now, that would be my best guess what probably happened uh, was the use of X-37. Could be. And also, you know, here in Oklahoma now, I don't know if you all know this, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma was uh, now the uh, place where they're doing all their uh, flight training right now. Um, they moved it to Tulsa, a big part of it. And they're doing a lot of their flight training right now in Oklahoma. It's a new deal. They had it hasn't been going on long, but um, they are doing a lot of their flight testing here. And that would not surprise me at all either. No, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, None at all. But I've never flown. I've never flown a plane. But I have jumped out of several. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> It's it's all possible, what like Kurt was saying, you know. It, and it's actually scary if you want to sit and think about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the the kid and the brother, <clears throat> they said it after they were able to look. They saw green colored men. They said not human, uh, green colored, and they said they had glowing eyes, big mouths. And uh, they were just standing in the backyard looking at the kids, and the kids said that they were they were frozen. Damn, that sounds after like they, they saw yeah. my ex-wife. <laughs> well, they well they said after after they got frozen, uh, they were able to move, and they ran inside, and they started hearing uh, footsteps on the roof. Now, this is where the story gets a little weird. The, the, the boy says, I heard thousands of footprints around me. Okay. When I, first, <clears throat> when I first heard him say that, your story starts losing traction with me. Yeah. Uh, another thing I noticed, and I don't know if y'all noticed this, if y'all watched the interviews or whatever, but did you notice he went from saying that him and his brother was working on the truck to it was him and his friend? Yeah, that, that's that was part that I did. Yeah, that was a discrepancy I caught. It was him and his brother, and then it was him and his friend. So we're we're starting to get discrepancies in the story, which is yeah, he's he's trying common. to make it up as he goes. It's a, it's a big red flag. Yeah, it's common with a lie. Very common. Uh, right. Now here it's here's we, the part. This, this part right here is where he lost all of my uh, all my uh, respect. Whenever he said the police officers went into our backyard and they have on their body cams the circle where the craft landed. Okay. If you go back on Google Earth and they showed this on many different platforms of his house, that circle was there a year prior to the landing, which was probably the circle of a swimming pool that had been there. Right. So they had to know that circle was there. It's been there over a year. It's your backyard. And then the kid tries to play it off as there's a circle in the backyard. You, you can't you can't do that. No. No. No, those that that boy, that family, they knew that circle was there. There's no doubt about it. I agree. It looked to me like it was outline of a above ground swimming pool. And the fact that it shows up on Google Earth a year earlier pretty well tells you yep. the boy is a liar. It looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, and walks like a duck. Exactly. It sure ain't a chicken. Now they, they, they did talk about you know all of them said that not only did they hear but they felt a shock wave 
which I felt that <clears throat> whenever I had the meteor that it went over my house that night whenever I was out there with her. There was the boom. You felt it inside of you. The, the glass rattled, you know, which that's common with re-entry, right? Yeah. Uh, right. A, a meteor will do that. Anything re-entering the atmosphere do it or entering the atmosphere get that sonic boom. There was one thing <clears throat> that I found weird that would make me think that there was a possibility that it was not a meteor. The doorbell recording that I listened to, I heard what I thought to be an aircraft. Uh, if it was an aircraft, that would almost make you wonder, was this a setup deal for the deception of Operation Bluebeam? Because and that I've would had, make perfect sense. Yeah, it would. It make I've sense. had military personnel sense. tell me that looked like a flare. And the reason they told me it looked like a flare on the re-entry, instead of burning up on an entry, they said if you watch it, it has a swagger to it. Mm -hmm. Like it was floating. Yeah, because of all the wind channels that's coming through as it's following. So if they're doing that, that would make you almost wonder how much money did the family get paid? Exactly. Because, you know, the family's gone right now and nobody can find them. The whole family. Right. Who that happened in a case. Found. Well, you remember the little kid in Oklahoma that was killed? Poor yep. family. They disappear. Uh -huh. Then they yep. show up on a huge house, brand new cars. Yeah, and, they, and they was broke. Oh, yeah. Now they're Everything. living their dream right out of their own yeah. words. We're living our dream. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, uh, they, let, they let their child die just for money. Yeah, and that's what it amounts to. Yeah, that's what it amounts, what it amounts to. I'm sorry. I just don't believe. I just don't believe in uh, selling your child like that. I'm sorry. I just no, no. Yeah, they. How could you, they, be, uh, how could you be happy? Yeah, they they, 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 sac they sacrificed that little guy. Yeah, they sacrificed that little little boy, and now they're happy. How can you be happy knowing your son's dead and he's not no longer there to enjoy? The will. Exactly right. You know, another thing that boy said, and I watched the, the cop's video camera. That boy said, the police officer told me, if it comes back, don't call us, shoot it. Well, I rewatched the footage that they, that they released. And the police officer did jokingly say, if it comes back, you know, don't call us. He never once said shoot it. There was so many discrepancies in the story. And the, the boy even said, you know, he said, uh, after the police left, we went in the front room and we all started praying. And we heard a scream in the backyard. Yeah. Very, very skeptical of this. Uh, uh, you hear screaming in the backyard. What's the first thing you're going to do? You will yeah. get up, go, and look see what's going on. Investigate it. Make sure nobody's hurt, especially one of your children. Exactly or at least right. I would. I would. I can't. I would too. Yeah, I can't speak for everyone but i would i'd go make sure my children were you know safe and then they, and then you yep. know they say uh the news channel local news channel now has released the information on it and they said that they have uh information now that it was a meteor and the family imagine that they don't know where the family yeah they don't know where the family's at so 
um, you notice in the video, the boy keeps talking about, this is probably going to go viral. This is probably going to go viral. That was another red flag to me that he was trying that, to get a viral. Yeah, that was a big red flag. He's wanting it to go viral. Yep. That's the reason, you know. He's like, yeah, I'll be internet famous. Yeah. Yeah. So what's Follow the money. Yep. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm money. thinking too. And I'm this sorry, really you, yep. you can have all, you can have all the money in the world and still be miserable. Money don't buy. Oh anything. yeah. Well, you know that's very. I, I even thought at first. I thought at first this may even be Project Bluebeam, but this isn't even. I don't think good enough to even go down that road. Do you? Do you think it follows that? I don't believe it does. At this point in time, no. No, it's it's not. It's. But. On the other hand, it is far enough out there that there's something going on, be it the family is just trying to scam people for money. Or be it the fact that maybe they need to see a psychiatrist. Maybe they actually did think that meteorite going over was a UFO. And that sonic boom, maybe they thought was it crashing. You know, hell, for that matter, we don't know that there wasn't, uh, shall we say, narcotics involved. Could I mean... It Anything would be possible. I mean, the 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 discrepancies is what bothered me. It was well, all the one thing, right? One thing that got me is when he said it was all green men. Yeah. Yeah. Like, out of everything, like I said, nar narcotics. Would, yeah. Would you? Why would they have? Back in the fifties, after uh, when that one guy pulled the war, uh, war of the planets, on the radio station. War of the worlds. Yeah, war yeah. of the worlds. Uh, they were yep. green men. Okay. Exactly from Mars. Yeah. So, what might you know? Why they had to be green? What about you know the movie called Fire in the Sky? That's based yep. on a true story. And the guy says, no, I never said they was aliens. He said they were humans in alien suits. And he said, whenever I ran away from them, it was in another room where a human in a regular space suit and grabbed me. And they said, so it was a space suit. And he goes, well, like a high altitude uh, jet pilot suit. High pressure suit. Yeah, okay. That makes you wonder. Is our yep. is our own people abducting us? Why well, it's been going on for years. You right? can't put anything past can't put anything past the government right now. No. I got something. There are factions in the government that I believe even the president has no control over. Are there factions in the government that he doesn't even know about? Because I have something I, I wanted to read. Okay. And um, it was sent to me by Steve, my best friend Steve. I talked to you all about. He's mm -hmm. got a lot of. He has a lot of knowledge now. Kurt, I'm going to let you go first and answer this. And then I'm going to let Cal go. I'm really interested in what y'all are going to say about this. This is what he told me. And it's, it's going to be a little bit of change of subject, but not as much. And I know, Kurt, you're going to love this subject. And I saved it just for you because I I just already know. I don't even have to ask. I don't even have to ask Kirk. I know <laughs> Cal knows where this is going. Kirk is going to know about this. Trust me. And he's probably, yeah, I'm just going to read it. He's okay. about not to be it. Go ahead. This is what my friend said. A green fireball, you know, the, the Las Vegas, copper, and he put in parentheses, copper glows green in heat. These things are most likely already here. Nephilim deceptions at work. Alistair Crawley 
was said to be Barbara Bush's father. If in doubt, compare the photos of the two side by side. The CERN project is responsible for the uptick in sightings, or so I think. They want to unite world under one leadership, a a.k.a. the Tower of Babel. You can bet yep. the Nephilim had their hand in that fiasco as well. So Ronald Reagan was speaking in the open, but also in code. And it was, uh, it was in code, hidden in plain sight. There are tunnels down in Old Mexico I heard about in the late 1970s. <coughs> Adding things up to the Nephilim doesn't like sunlight, so spray the sky black and blacken out the sun so they can come from the underground dark they cannot stand the name of jesus or the brightness of the most high's glory that's why he says they're spraying in the air is to block the sun out yep yep, yep. <laughs> and we actually know that the chemtrails are doing just that you know you look at all the trails that are in the skies at times they're not normal Hell, I remember as a kid, you never saw anything like that in the sky. No. I'm not as old as you are, and I, I know that. You, know, you never see well, anything like that. What happened to the big thunderheads and the days where we would have rain, thunder, it would stop, the sun would come out, rain, thunder, it stopped, the sun would come out, bright blue mm -hmm. skies. Uh, there was a guy in Pennsylvania up where uh, Kurt resides in his state, and he's a big time farmer. And he said, the sun has been so blocked out this year, the crops are suffering. Yep. Yeah. They're not getting enough sunlight. They're wilting. They're they're stunning their growth and everything. Yeah, they actually had to cancel a couple strawberry festivals up here because we haven't got the rain that we should have and we haven't got the sunlight that we should have. We'll have plenty of overcast skies. Look like it's going to rain, but yet bone dry. So, what about the caves in Mexico? Well, it, like I said, nothing anymore surprises me. No. You heard, a, you heard about the whistleblower, right? <clears throat> He worked down in the caves, and he said part of the rules are whenever you go down in the cave, there's one rule. You cannot use God or Jesus' name. Doesn't matter if you say it out of anger. Doesn't matter if you stub your toe and you say, oh, you know, whatever. Right. You cannot use their name because the creatures they have in there, when they hear the name of Jesus, they go crazy. Good. I mean, that really does not surprise me. And I can believe that they're in more than just caves in Mexico. They're probably scattered throughout the world, hidden in different places. I, I, believe, I, I, even, I believe there's some under the White House. Yep. Well, exactly right. I know somebody that laid pipe under the White House, but I'm not going to say no names. Yeah, uh, really. Uh, also, uh, Skinwalker Ranch. I've had a yeah. theory for a long for a long time that that's just an underground military base. Why do you think it's people on there? Well, it gets a little bit little bit more confusing than just that because you actually have a another ranch and I forget exactly where it is Mount Wilson it is another ranch much like Skinwalker Ranch has the exact same things happening has had the exact same things happen. Robert Bigelow bought both Skinwalker Ranch and that Wilson Ranch within one week of each other and then sold them both within 
one week of each other. So, with that being said, the similarities uh, just too strong. There's something going on. This Wilson Ranch is actually not too far from Area 51. Do you think so, there's a possibility? I'm going to go deep on this. We might get, we okay. might get in trouble on this. But do, you, do, you, do you think there's a possibility that since we've now found out that the government was allegedly involved in the magic circle and dark practices... That there's I'll guarantee you there that, is. Uh, that these properties have uh, the magic circles on them. Yep. Exactly right. And both, both these, both these properties, I would really venture to guess, especially the Wilson Ranch, because of the fact its proximity to Area Fifty One. I would lay you money that it has something to do with government. You know, maybe, just maybe, and I'll throw this out there, maybe there's a UFO in the sense of the term only unidentified flying object. Maybe there is one buried at each one of these two ranches. But... What's to say that that UFO is only a UFO because it hasn't been released to the general po population what it actually is? The government, I'm pretty sure, knows what they are because they're theirs. Well, there was a guy you know, that made the comment, he's no longer with us, so that kind of tells us he was on the right track. He yep. said that all these properties that were like Skinwalker Ranch and everything, if you will notice, he said there was a lot of holographic things going on, especially in the mountains on them. And he said, right. he said, all I'm going to say is, what is Project Bluebeam? He said they are holographic. holographic. Exactly and right. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's where your radiation is coming from, because it takes a lot of power to use lasers to create such a large projection. Yep. He, and he an the the very funny thing about both of those ranches is they do have very strange, very strong magnetic anomalies in them that is, at this point in time, unexplainable. And rumor has it, and I'd have to talk to... Well, I'd have to talk to one of the individuals down there that's working on Skinwalker Ranch, but supposedly there was a large circuit found in, in the ground. Uh, and when I say large circuit, it basically was an electrical circuit that covered about five acres. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um... I guess he what? needed to charge his ship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, five acres of electrical circuit, that has to be the largest circuit ever. Um, that does need more investigation, but that right there tells you that, hey, this is set up for a large electrical draw. What do they need a large electrical draw for? Okay, maybe it is for running the lasers for Project Blue Beam. Mm -hmm. Then let's well, face it. No longer with us, so he won't be able to right. elaborate any. Right, where both of these ranches are they're both basically out in the middle of nowhere where under normal circumstances you would have no, nobody bothering you so you can pretty much do what you want. Now, unfortunately you know, for... 
Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, even the people that lived on these ranches, <clears throat> they were so afraid. They had locks yep. inside of their house on doors upon doors inside of their house. Yep. What, what was outside the house? Don't know, but something they well, don't want we, to get in. Well, we know with Skinwalker Ranch, there's been, quote, wolves as large as a dire wolf seen there. There's been other cryptid beings seen there. Uh, this Wilson Ranch, we know there have been wolves seen there. We know that there has been at least one sighting of Sasquatch there. What else is there? I'm not sure. Hell, I'm... Yeah, they probably don't know what all is there. And I don't blame them for added security on the house. What do you think of this theory? I have a theory. I'll run it past you and Cal. And it goes right along with the theory that I've had all along. Um, okay, you all know I've always said that uh, I believe that cryptids and paranormal uh, creatures are possibly connected uh, due to the Nephilim bloodline. You would have that connection because of the Nephilim being the offspring of the fallen, which the fallen are the disembodied demons, which would be attracted right. to the Nephilim, which would be distant family. But, you know, people say that paranormal doesn't always happen with a cryptid, uh, you know, with a cryptid encounter. It's like 25% of cryptid encounters, you end up right. with a... Uh, you know, a paranormal. Paranormal. Experience. Yeah. So, what if, just a possibility, say our government or some other contractor is performing uh, Project Bluebeam, and they're practicing on these ranches, right? So, say they're they're planning this great deception. Okay, and this is going to go deep. Okay, so let's right. say that they're they're doing all this. Okay. Well, let's say also, all alleged, let's say that there is parts of these contractors or whoever they may be that's funding this are involved in demonic activities, okay? So they're planning this great deception, the false coming of Christ to cover up the rapture, okay? Or whatever. It could be anything, but let's just say that for right now. And... They started doing all this, infiltrating all this, doing their ceremonies that they do, drinking their red Kool-Aid that they like to drink from yep. the kids. Yep. Doing their things on these properties, right? Well, if they're doing all this and they're doing the work of the enemy, we'll say the enemy. Yeah. And when we know what he is. Would that not draw the disembodied demons to this property and would would that not draw maybe 25% of the cryptids there that have this attachment to these cryptids, to this property so because of what you're doing the rituals that you're doing you're bringing all this to the property which would be no different than the magic circle that we used at the Girl Scouts to put the demon in a gugway to bring it to the same property you're making these properties very unstable, evil, right? And, um, let's say uh, attached to, like a, like an item. They become yep. attached. To it. What do you think of that theory, guys? I think it's a very good theory. It's a very good possibility. Uh, I would actually love to have the opportunity to prove it out. Although, of course. Am I ever going to be invited to Skinwalker Ranch? No. Will I ever be invited to Wilson Ranch? Probably not. But, you know, it does need investigation. I do think that Travis Taylor, who is running the investigation on Skinwalker Ranch, Travis is a brilliant, brilliant man. I do think he's going to get to the bottom of this as much as they will let him. 
I think at one point in time, they're going to stymie the investigation and Travis is going to end up standing there with egg on his face because he's going to know the answer already, but not going to be allowed to prove it because they're not going to want it let out yet. Cal, your camera looks a lot better too like that. I can't hear Cal though. Nope. You there, Kyle? Or Calvin, I mean? We can't hear you. How about now? There we go. Now okay. we can. Um, I believe Travis is going to end up yeah. coming and finding a little too much information out, like you were saying, Kurt. And uh, they're going to find his mangled body somewhere. Yeah. Walker. And he said, oh, well, you know, it must have been a cryptid. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm afraid of also. Yep. And I can tell you a couple years ago, I did talk to Travis uh, for a little bit. And very brilliant man. One of the smartest people I've ever met. Uh, it's going to be a shame when that does happen. But like I say, I believe he's going to get to the bottom of it. And when he gets to the bottom of it, he'll be so close, but won't be able to prove it. And that's probably when that accident will happen. Right. Yep. That actually You're scared right. me whenever his door opened. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> no. no position. They're, they're, coming. <laughs> they're, they're coming after Cal. Yeah. They better come heavy. Jessica Jones, you know, was on the show the other night. <clears throat> right. Did you get to hear her talk about the hitchhiker effect she had? I did not. Because of work schedule and everything going on, I have not got to watch it yet. It went after her kid. Calvin's friend had the hitchhiker effect when after his kid, these things target the children. Yep. And, you know, that's scary. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is scary. Because uh, it's like kids are magnets and they like draw, draw it right to them. Yep. But, guys, I'm going to get off here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have some uh, chores I got to get done, and uh, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good, Cal. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. But I, I think it's the, uh, I think it might be part of what they're doing out there that's drawing these things there. Because, you know, if you leave a, an open door to evil, it's going to come. Exactly. There's no doubt about it. Just like, you know, the... Man, I don't know how to say this without getting in trouble. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the problem. We do have to watch what we're saying because of the entities involved. But, you know, still, it is something that needs to be out there. Okay, you know, the, the magic circle. Yeah. We, we, we talked about the magic empire council yeah. that owned the Girl Scouts. Yeah. Then we, then we talked about who funded it. Yep. The organization that funds that, I have now found out, their favorite number is 33. They have to yep. Have a circle also that is called the magic circle, Kurt. I found that out. I told you I am digging deep on this situation that all ties into what we're going to release probably first of August. They were hiding what they are right in front of us. Sure. 
and they pretend to be a Christian organization. Sticking their tongues out in their pictures. A hand halfway inside of your shirt. Yep. Other signs and symbols that they do. Yep. Secret societies. And you know what pisses me off the most? They're after What's the that, kids. Mike? They're after the kids. Yeah. Exactly right. That is exactly right. And why do you think that is? Well, we know the name of what they want, but we can't say it because as soon as we do, this channel's done. Uh, yep. But it's no wonder they never found out who done the Girl Scout murders because, I mean, it went all the way to the top. That's exactly right. It's like they were they were offered up. That's exactly what it was. And man, they I, were a I, sacrifice. I, Bothers me too. And I would like to know how many more of these young people that have come up missing that are never found. How many more of those are actually sacrifices for this? Right. Well, you know, uh, there's a person going to come on our show. She's going to do a uh, <clears throat> a video with this, probably a pre-recorded. She's a little nervous. Uh, she's having the same. Okay, during her childhood, right? She was having encounters with cryptids. She moved away into her adulthood. Her mom and them, I believe, passed away. and She's now back at her home place, and it's all starting back up again. She also lives next door to the Girl Scouts. Imagine that. It's almost like the Girl Scouts are your hot areas. And it's not because of there, the land. Th it's no, there's... The little girls are there. Yeah, there is an attraction there, uh, and I'm not going to say it happens in every case, every Girl Scout camp, but yeah, there is an attraction there, and there do seem to be strange things that happen around their lands. What, you know, I, I don't know this. I haven't looked this far, but I'm wondering whenever they have their fires, the Girl Scouts, is there like a, is it a ceremony? Is it just a fire? Is it a cookout? What, what, my, my, what that I, I really can't tell you a whole lot about that because I don't know. I never bothered researching that, even though with you bringing that up, it may be good to look into if there is some kind of ceremony that's going on when they have their fires or if it's just, you know, gathering around a campfire. I'm interested. But now, if there is some type of ceremony, maybe there is a dark side to that ceremony that we don't know about and that, of course, the little girls don't know about. But in doing that ceremony, they're now somehow opening some type of door. Look at it like this. I mean, you can even look at it like this. Uh, Ring Around the Rosie. That's the darkest song you could sing. Yep, I know. But kids were taught that it was okay. It was a nursery rhyme. Yep. So, I mean, you could put that in their heads at a fire. They can think they're saying something fun, doing something fun, but there's a darkness to it. You know, sure. a lot of, you know, a lot of the nursery rhymes are, are very dark and have, you know, truth. I know, uh, well, you know, that's, that's just, he said, there's a little truth to every nursery rhyme, you know? Yeah. That's just like even that one movie that was released, I don't know, a year, maybe two years ago uh, with the witches, you would think that. There I go again saying that name. But you would think that 
everything in that movie would be made up would nothing would be factual or as it actually is oh i know what you're but talking yeah, about already yeah at the one point they actually perform an actual spell i've seen that and it's like okay there's something wrong here how did this ever get released like that if there isn't more of that going on in Hollywood than we even know. I agree. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I've seen it, and a lot of people talked about that. They yep. Said that was an actual spell. Yep. Uh, you know, it makes you wonder about, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. Who, who was the bad wolf? Yeah, exactly. You know? And he was killed, you know, by the guy with the axe. Yep. And, you know, we've had... How many stories have you, you know, interviewed where people said, even back in the 1800s in England and around, when they said that the werewolves were killed with blades? Yeah. Well, and as I say, there's many, many, many Native American legends of braves being able to hold off cryptids with nothing more than their knife. Very but yet, but yet we know uh, a lot of cases people will shoot a cryptid. Cryptid runs off. Does it die later? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Right. You know, I would hope to think that it would. But you never know. Uh, and not to sound bad or anything, but it all comes down to did the person actually even hit the cryptid when they fired at it? Did they miss? If they hit it, where'd they hit it? You know? And then even think about this, you know, they say, you know, cryptids are very, are very intelligent. If very were, much so. If you were going to die being a human like me and you are, would you rather be shot or hacked to death? You know? Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, a knife brings a whole different fear. A blade yeah, does. brings a whole different fear. Yeah. I mean, that's a terrible death. Yes, it is. And, you know, even the Indians, you know, telling me that, you know, that, that the cryptids learned to stop at the tree line because they knew the Indians had rifles. And if right. they went to the opening, they were, you know, fair game. Yep. And I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, uh, they're starting to notice that dogmen are actually better climbers than squirrels. They are exceptional climbers. And not surprisingly, so are Sasquatch. The only problem with Sasquatch is Sasquatch, because of their sheer size and weight, has to be in big timber. So that kind of goes along with when me and my son and my nephew saw that dog man that day. He jumped right, right up a tree and was shaking it at us. Yep. That was eerie. <laughs> That if I would have had a rifle that day, you know, I, I may not have took a shot at him just because I had the kids with me and I didn't. I wouldn't want to get rushed by him. Right. I would have felt a lot better knowing that if they did try to close that gap across the field, that I had more range than what my forty-five was going to give me that day. I could have exactly. You know, I had a longer range of engagement. And that exactly that makes you feel better always when you have yep. a longer. And as much as I hate to throw this out there, but we do know with proper shot placement, they can be killed with a 308. And we also know that they damn sure can be killed with a 338. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think uh, we pretty much covered the topic tonight. Uh, I think that we uh, we lost Cal, but 
I think we're pretty much all in agreement that it wasn't aliens. It was probably a hoax. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a hoax. I would hate to think that the people were doing it, but unfortunately they were. And it makes it hard for us to get the truth out there. Because right. Hoaxers do nothing but hurt us. That that hurts every channel. Not not just that's us, right. Every, everybody out there, you know, trying to uh, trying to figure it out. And um, yep, I hate when they do that because it really does cripple us. You know. Sure. Like I said, we're all about the truth. You know, when I investigate something, Mike, I go in with no pre preconceived notions. And wherever the evidence takes me is where I go. You know, right. it is what it is. Whether I like the outcome of it or not, doesn't matter. The evidence is the evidence. And, you know, we have that, <clears throat> that I'm not going to say no names, but we have that one channel that doesn't like us. It's been actually copying our content now. They uh, are calling <laughs> their, their people now, their family and, they're out yeah. for the truth, and uh, he yeah. is activated because he's losing subscribers. But I think we're picking him up because I, I gained over 600 subscribers in one week. So, oh, I'm sure we're picking him up. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But one of the other things that I did notice about that channel, he also claims that many of his guests have PTSD. Okay, yeah. well. But yet he doesn't claim what the PTSD is from. Well, I think he saw that because Lisa came on our channel and she had. PTSD. Exactly. He saw exactly. That, that, that that video was still trending and he's using that. Sadly, he's using that as a way to try to go big on his channel. And I'm yep. just going to say right now that is sick to use that like that. Yep. Exactly right. Yep. That's nothing more than a marketing ploy and a sick con job to the American public. And to take advantage of somebody that really does have, you know, issues from, you know, seeing terrible things, living through terrible things. Right. And, and to use that, that's, I mean, um, that's, that's bad. I yep. do want to read, read one thing, though, before we end this, because you know and I know we do have haters out there. and um, Yes, we do. So I just want to end it with the material and information on this site have been prepared by Abnormal Investigations and its co-hosts for informational purposes only and do not constitute legal advice or guarantee facts. The information provided is provided as is and all opinions and statements implied are disclaimed. The owner of this site assumes no liability, responsibility for any errors, omissions in the content contained on this site. And I, I know that we, uh, it's important that we do that because there is a person and other people that would like to come after us. And yep, I was advised by an attorney that to use that on all videos. Yep, so. yep, and it's a good thing that you do. It's it's bad that you have to, but. That's what yes, it is. is. Jealousy I know is it. an evil, evil thing. Jealousy and hatred. Yep. Very much so. Why does that say, don't hate me because you ain't me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, everybody, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let us know, and uh, we can for sure put more pre-recorded mm -hmm. videos out. Um, I want to thank Kirk and Cal for coming tonight and doing this show with me. We thought it was important that we address this show with the uh, publicity that this has brought. And uh, we wanted to give our opinions on it <clears throat> and what our beliefs were on it. And uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And uh, with that, I'll let uh, Kirk have the last say tonight, guys. And uh, thank you and God bless. Guys, thanks for being with us. We try to put out the best content possible. We give you our view of what the situation is we try to back everything up with facts and hopefully we put out a good show for you we appreciate you being here watching us we 
consider everybody family and hope to see more of you. God bless you and good night.